Ryan gets up and tears the shit out of everybody. Runs like the wind. Eats everything in his path. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals. Taylor Who is? Oh, love. It's the Cool Breeze Show. It's the homie Cool Breeze. I got RGB in the building. Holla at RGB, tell them what you on, do. Man. Yeah, I am a rapper, producer, engineer, whatever you want to do. I'm an all around person. I'm just a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, now, I actually met you at a Yoshi event. Yeah. Now, are you a part of the Yoshi crew or are you just. I mean, affiliated. I'm, I'm affiliated, you know what I'm saying, and you know, cause that's my that's that's my homie. Okay. You know what I'm that's my nigga, man. You know, we we been knowing each other for a, a long time, mm -hmm. and before I was I was producing. When I was producing, you know, he started rapping and stuff. And once I started rapping, he's always been like, "Hey, man, you need to start rapping." I was like, "Well, you know, I got you know, sent him the signs of entertainment." what I was trying to do. So I had brought an artist up, my cousin, and I had a singer, and I was trying to do that, which was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And that didn't pan out, but I was already always doing like hooks and stuff like that, and rapping, it's just on the side, you know what I'm saying, to myself as a hobby. And he was like, listen man, you, you just start rapping. I was like, uh, right now I'm bullshit. You know, when I get for real, and I let you know, you know, you'll, you'll know when I'm, when I'm for real. And my neighbor, you know, she hit me up and she was like, you rap. You can start rapping. <laughs> <laughs> she sent me a track. <laughs> she sent me a track and she was like. She produced too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she, shout her out. Is, uh, yeah. Julie Silenecki, you know, Sloan. Uh, she, she basically does everything. Wow. Like, literally everything. sent me a track. I did a feature on that track called, um, what was it? Uh, it was the first track we ever did. I think it was uh, We Are The World. Like and when we did that track and released it, first of all, I was like, eh, I ain't really, you know, feeling the, the whole rap scene just yet because I'm still, I was kind of new to really doing it like professionally. But then we got on there, man. I did a show. We did another song together. We did a show together. She has a whole had a whole band. That's why the Sloan, Sloan concept come in. And I performed with her. And next thing you know, she was like, listen, you're ready. You can do this on your own for real. For real. Mm. You know, you got in here, you rapped, oh, not over an instrumental. I mean, not over your vocals on a whole, in a whole rock band setting. And I remember the owner of the, the spot we was at, can't remember what spot we was at, but he came and he was like, listen, how long you been doing this? I was like, well, this is my first ever show. He was like, you been doing, you, you, you just did this, like you have been doing this for years. You like, you seasoned. And I was like, well, man, that's a compliment, compliment to me. And he was like, bro, like, he said, just keep doing it. And then I called Yoshi, I was like, listen, I'm doing music now. <laughs> I said, look, I'm, I'm doing in this shit now. now. And now it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it on my own and not with Julie anymore. You know, so she just, she was like, listen, it's your time now. It's time you start releasing your own music. Now, um... You actually did start rapping before that. I mean, you didn't actually rap rap, yeah, but you yeah, you rap, started rap. like, um, you know, freestyle and stuff yeah, way yeah, before yeah. that, right? Way, 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 way before that. When I was seven, you know, me and my brother, Tiny, we used to go at it. You know, he used to challenge me because he rapped back in the days and then he moved to Tallahassee. And uh, he, he was rapping there and then he got locked up. Mm. Which kind of deterred me from rapping. I was kind of like, what am I going to do now? You know, my influence just left you know what i'm saying and it, i hated it i hated the law you know i mean of course you know right holy songs <laughs> i couldn't i could not like just 
I was like, dang, and then you know he got hit up off the of co defendant bullshit. Oh. So he did 17. And once I got into middle school, I got into the band. And I started playing the E flat alto saxophone. Hey, shout out to Sax. Shout out to the My e uncle plays sax. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. He um, won the Louis Armstrong Award oh, in, uh, from Central State, Ohio. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's yeah, cool. Sax man. run deep, my wife. Yeah, man. Yeah. I played the sax. Look, I played the saxophone and I played football at the same time, <laughs> which was hard because I was in a concert band. And, but that started the production side. Right, right, you know, right. Playing the saxophone, learning music, learn how. I, I love to do scales. My first song to actually learn how to do without, lit, you know, without reading music was uh, in the jungle. The Are you serious? <laughs> that was the first first song that I ever learned, like by by it. Oh, oh, so you could just play it just based off of hearing yeah. it. Oh, that's, like, dope. Hmm. that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. G, G, so I, I started. Can you still like, do that? <laughs> I mean, I still do it now. Like, well, if I do you work on the keys now? I, I well, I have a keyboard in my daughter's room, and I bought a keyboard because she sings. Oh, okay. Well, she's exploring singing. I got she you. ain't for real. She, she BS into it, but she ain't for real yet. How did you get your name? All right, so in in high school, my my brother they called him Moon. Okay. And he was in class in our room. My brother, my other brother, had got locked up playing. He did. He was doing seventeen. So they was, you know, making fun. You know, how, you know, how dudes do, man. You know, niggas, niggas ain't like, shit. So they your brother just went to jail. Yeah, they was, they was joking and stuff. So my brother was like, he got a quick temper. So right. you know, he ain't about that joking shit. You know what I'm saying? He, he a thug. So <laughs> <laughs> he ain't about that joking shit. Right. He about that life. So he got mad. Got up. He punched the hole into the, in the cabinet in the art room, and so Mr. Gary, which is the art teacher, mm -hmm. you know, he was like, "Oh shit!" So they, he was like, "This is art room, so this is art." And they put a, a whole little label at the bottom. He of named the it. Named he it named. And put, <laughs> put put real gangster up on it. Okay. Because hey, that's what they call my brother, real gangster. RG. So the RG, and then so when I got to to high school, right, I was in art. And his homeboy was in there. It was like, hey, Mr. G, this is RG's brother. And he said, oh, well, we're going to call you RGB. <laughs> and that name, boom. Yeah, I am, RGB. That's crazy. That's what happened. You know what? Us older brothers, we have a tendency of uh, putting a putting a bad rap on our little brothers. I acted a fool in school. And the teachers knew who my little brothers was. And it don't help that y'all look like us either. Right. <laughs> it don't help. And then, you know, I mean, now I, I was, a, I was you know, a good kid right. in school. You know what I'm saying? I fought, but I did all that shit in the street. Nah. My mom whooped my ass. If, any, if she got any bad news, oh, she would come to the school. And because I got old, other older brothers, I ain't want that. They call my mom a hurricane jacket. <laughs> I didn't want no parts of Hurricane oh. to embarrass me at school. You know what? what and that's the problem. I wish I had an older brother so I'd have known. Like, my mom would show up at the school. Ooh. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're yeah, wilding. you know, I, I was fighting, you know, doing the typical hood nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and then, you know, my homeboys got locked up. And I'm like, right, man, yeah. I got a whole couple of homeboys who died and shit. I'm like, damn. I ain't trying to die. Reality I ain't trying to go to jail yeah. either. I ain't trying to get shot either. Like, right, you right. You know what I'm mean? saying? Being, being shot at, man, it, it, it changed your mindset. Right, right, so, right. Actually, you know, I, I'm like, all right, I've been shot at once. Ain't trying to get shot at again. Right. Shit, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to have, you know, have that happen. So I moved up here. Um, I was going to school. I moved up here now. In Atlanta, you know, Atlanta big, but it ain't, it ain't big. You can find yourself in the wrong hood Easy, all the time. Quickly, very, quickly. very quick. Yeah. So that's why I, I kind of, I kind of stay where, I, where I'm comfortable at, and I don't really go too many places because niggas don't know me. So why go somewhere where niggas don't know you? You know what I'm saying? And it, 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 it's just a, it's a different vibe. You know, not if, if it's some niggas that fuck with me, maybe. You know, 
because they fuck with me and so they ain't gonna be like, all right, you know, y'all need to chill the fuck out. But I don't know nobody. But it's it's hard to like navigate. You know, yeah, yeah. You know how people be like, oh, I can go to any hood. No, you can't. <laughs> you, you can't go to any hood. Like, you good everywhere. So, you know, I don't know too many people that just good everywhere. You know, that's not famous. Right, right. And even some famous people ain't good here. With, you right, know? I was going to say, it's you worse for them because Joker's growing up asking for money. Yeah, you can't come You're going to get robbed, period. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, that's, that's just how that hood shit go with the mentality. Of, so I try to like. But not only do you avoid it. that, like, I guess in your personal life, you also, um, like, you don't put that on your music either. Well, I ain't necessarily saying I don't put it in the music. But, but it's not I like, mean, it's not like you focus. ain't talking about the gang and how y'all finna go yeah, mob yeah, everybody yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that shit. I, first off, I ain't, I ain't never been in no gang, so I ain't gonna talk about being in no gang. Mm-hmm. I ain't even get no, no blood or no crit shit, because I ain't with, I, I'm not, I don't do that. I ain't never did it, you know what I'm saying? I, I did street shit. It's a, it's a difference between a street nigga and a gang nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's, I'm just a regular street nigga that's just in the streets. You know, I hung around, you know, niggas that was in really gang shit, but I ain't never like was part of no gang shit. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of kept myself away from all that. It was kind of hard, cause you know, you, you, all your homies and shit, your friends and shit. It be family, know, yeah. Family, you know. It be what kin so, that be in it. So you know, you just affiliated. You know, so people, that's how people look at it. But I try to do my music and teach logic in the music that's why roi you know different clause there's a lot of financial and, literacy yeah, in your music yeah so strictly business is going to be all about business you know you got the irs on fuck the irs <laughs> you, got you, got account, you got an accountant on you got rise and grind you know what i'm saying motivational keep going you got there's a lot of motivational stuff in there you know and trying to teach People, you, when you listen to my music, on, especially on Rise and Grind, it literally teaches you the rule of 72. Which basically, you know, investing in, you know, in mutual fund, you know, that's at a rate of 12%, after so many years, your money double. Right. Or triple, or ever how many, you know, if you're that aggressive. But I try to pick that substance, you know what I'm saying? Because there ain't a lot of substance. In music, I can't listen to a song now and be like, I learned something today. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, and a lot of this is stuff that isn't in school either. Like they're yeah. not teaching, they're yeah, not they teaching teach in school uh, stuff about investing. I mean, and even like I went to college too. And even when you go to college, it's, the thing that made me drop out of school was I took one entrepreneurship class. It was a dude who actually had his own insurance company, and I'm like in the class, and he kind of in so many words kind of made it clear like you don't really need this to run your own business so i'm like what why am i here like what am i doing here so like yeah i dropped out um, yeah, my my um my accountant teacher mm. taught me how to how to basically uh calculate mortgage and see if if somebody's being cheated out of their mortgage and, I, and how to make a business out of that it's going door to door doing that for people but you know i kind of like you know the door to door that, that that's work. a hard life not, not in all of it i can't go do, i tried uh i tried selling um it was an herbal life <laughs> now listen in albany georgia it's you know it's albany georgia it's free you know it's racist you know it's racist yeah, america yeah. but i i didn't know how bad it was until i went out into the country of the country part of Albany, and I knock on the door, and you know I look the way I look. My, my hair was longer, mm. and I had on a suit, suit and shirt and tie and stuff. And she opened that door, and she saw me, boom, went running, screaming. <laughs> Somebody, I'm trying to sell you something. I'm like, oh, damn, that was my first like, oh, wow, it's really like this. When I was doing door to door sales, for it was alarms though. I was trying to sell alarms. Man, oh man, that is, you don't want to smoke with that. But I want to touch on this. Now, uh, with a lot of music, you hear about bitches and hoes, bitches and hoes. But you're married. Speak on the mindset. What? Why did you never, like, try to, I don't know, why has it never been about that for you? Um, 
First of all, my wife is crazy. <laughs> Second of all, I've never been the type that just do the bitches a whole thing. Because it just seems just regular to me. Like, that shit just is regular shit. Like, I'm not, I'm on, I gotta stay focused. Like all my I, all of my life I've been like okay focus 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 that's just the time you know, the mind frame that I had mm -hmm. and you know you okay you see you see the bitches and hoes you know they, of course they, they, they pretty they, you know how they yeah, they're you everywhere they everywhere they buy they they don't buy they buying their bodies now too also so it's like okay <laughs> now they looking at it, I'm like okay so shit that, that shit dead man right to me you know some people are they rappers they they love that shit. They, oh, but let's rap about the bitches and Alright, that's cool, that's cool and all, but I'm focused on the music. I'm trying to get this, you know, get this shit right, I'm trying to get off the ground. I ain't trying to, I ain't dealing with it. I don't see too many people go down for that shit. And, you know, being married, it's kind of the thing now. As a rapper, you know, yeah, right, right. everybody chain, Gucci everybody got, everybody yeah, got, yeah, I was just gonna say Gucci got married, two chains married. Now, so, you know, I kind of. Who else just recently got married? Oh, then Nicki Minaj got, just got proposed yeah, to. Yeah, Fabulous finally got married. Fabulous, married. yeah. Cardi B, I'll see it. Oh, yeah. yeah they got so married you know, quick. That was yeah. like, the, that's probably one of the younger ones. Yeah, um, that's, first of all, Fab, I think what, Fab, the whole Fabulous thing, that, that was that was overdue. <laughs> right. That's it, little bit, but yeah, it's cool now. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I was ahead of the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can say I was a trend set. Right. They saw, they saw my post. Yeah, they didn't really know me, but. They probably saw, oh, damn, who was that dude? Man, that How long have you been married? Oh, we've been married, what, a year, a year and some change now? You know, we got married uh, last year, July. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been cool. We've been getting, getting together 10 years, so. Uh, a whole decade. Yeah. A whole decade, that's long as hell. And it's been, it, it, it ain't been nothing different. It's all been the same. So when we got married, it's, it's just was like, okay, so now we got a title. Right, right, right. And ain't nothing changed. Like legally, yeah, legally. Yeah, in this thing now. Right. So like, when people be like, oh, it's different. It's different. And no, it's because it's only different because you just wasn't ready for it. Like, you know, so you got to kind of prepare yourself. Oh, yeah, you know, things change. No, it ain't supposed to change. It's supposed to stay the same. But if you having fun and you with your friend, your best friend, and it's supposed to continue to be fun. And you know what I'm saying? You with your best friend. So that's how that's how I got to do it. Alright. Um We talked about how positive you are in your music. Um and now I'm definitely gonna cut that part. Um there's a there was something I was thinking about when you were gone. Um Oh, Yoshi, talking about how you first started performing with Yoshi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when I got serious and started doing this professionally, you know, I, I reached out to Yoshi and was like, listen, you've been trying to get me to rap. Right. You know, I started rapping and stuff. I started, I performed with with Julie uh, and Sloan. Uh, they had a you know, uh, soft rock band. The first, the first event you went to with him was the goofy, ju, ju, the goofy, goofy juice, Palooza. goofy palooza. Okay. Yeah, goofy palooza was the first event that, that I did. Mm -hmm. um, I, I attended the, the the last one the year before, and I was like, man, that shit dope as hell, you know. And I was like, man, maybe you know I will get a shot once I really get right. So Yoshi called me up and like, hey, listen. It's just shot. You know, we gonna, you know, if you, if you sell this many tickets, then you'll get to do, you know, this much time if you want to. You know, you can do a 15 minute set if you want to. How much have you done, had you done before that? I mean, I was part of a 45 minute set, but I only did, what, 30 seconds? Because <laughs> it was a feature, actually, you know what? Oh. I did a, I did a uh, two. I did two, two, two parts. I did like a little. She had, um, Julie had like a song where it had like a little extended part. So I just basically just got on there and laid one. You know, a verse that I had already had. And she was like, "Just come on, play and lay a verse." So boom, I got it and did that unrehearsed. Did that, and then that was like what another thirty seconds. So I guess a minute. <laughs> it was a whole minute. It's a whole sixty so seconds. So going from going from. 
one minute to 15 to 20 minutes is a drastic change. And then doing it by yourself, yeah. oh man. Like, I mean, I get nervous, you know, I get nervous before, but once that might hit my head, it's go time. What was the, I guess, the training method you used to kind of get used to? So me and Yoshi, we, uh, he brought me to the to his house. Okay. And he was like, listen, we, you know, to get you right, you know, we're gonna practice as if there's a shitty mic, and we're gonna practice as if there's a great mic. So he taught me how to, if it's a shitty mic, I have to project now, because my vocals ain't coming through the, you know, the, the, the sound, and my vocals are not gonna Come through the speakers well. like yeah, it's so, supposed to. So and I gotta yell, Mm -hmm. Add extra energy to it, and so we practiced for like two to three, four hours oh, for man. that show. And I was damn out of <laughs> my boys were about to go. Right. And then when I get to the venue, it's not a good mic, so I'm well prepared for that. You know, if it went if it went for him, us doing that, shit, I would it would have been a horrible show. Um, people would have, oh man, you know, of course they'd be like, oh that was good, but then it ain't went good. Right. But uh, Kelby from Making a Magazine, he was there. He was like, yo, man, the was pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? Dope set you did. You know, I kind of, I kind of like. That's that. one thing I noticed about everybody that performed um, the Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy uh, showcase that y'all did. It was, it was like, y'all had a lot of energy, like. I thought y'all was gonna break that stage. Oh man! <laughs> I knew y'all was gonna break that stage. Man, let me tell you, uh, that was seriously crazy. I thought the stage was gonna break. It felt like I, because you know, you had to put on a show. Right. Yeah. You know, it's different from a person just listening to your music. Like you gotta give them something. You know, because I, I before. Before I, I perform it, like, hey man, they, I ain't, you know, some people you, you watch them, like, oh, I don't feel it. Right. But, Stendo, that cat, there, Taco? What, bro? That cat, that bring, that he bring down the house. And so I'm like, damn, if I gotta go after him, right. I gotta, I gotta bring. I gotta you gotta go. go. Nah, he ain't, got, <laughs> he ain't got as much energy as he does, as he has. Like, nah, he, I think he whole, jumped off the stage. Yeah, he like, jumped off stage like a Power Ranger. Like the, <laughs> the, the, the fall down thing. Right. Yeah. But like, you, you gotta follow that. You gotta bring energy too. So you know, it, and it, it was dope because everybody, you know what I'm saying? It was a good, great lineup. You know, everybody came with it. Everybody came with it. So yeah, that was that was a great experience, man. And, you know, we got we, we just did Street Piper on the 14th um, of December, and 2020 going down. So you know, we got South by Southwest coming up. And, and when is South by Southwest? It's, uh, I always it's see it. It's yeah, March. Yeah, oh, okay, March. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That'd so be good. Trying to do some, trying to do something big, man. I'm getting out there. Cause I was thinking HBC was the the place to be, but apparently. South by Southwest is like HBC times 30, some shit like that. I'm gonna have to finesse that. Cause yeah. I finesse but I gotta stop saying that on camera. Yeah, you can't. I have to stop saying that. <laughs> Cause they gonna be looking for <laughs> this thing at me. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm not kidding. I finessed my way in that bitch for five, four days. I didn't pay a dime. As a matter of fact, hold up. I got the, listen. I'm commemorating. I got the thing on my bag. I man, that's how I met Yoshi. Oh, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that man, that shit was fun. That shit was fun. So yeah. I, if A three C is like, what you say, five times? And I got it goes it. on for uh, like uh, it goes on for like almost two weeks. Like it's a long festival. It ain't no weekend thing. Dang. Start. It start on like. It start on like. Where is it? It's in Austin. Oh, it's in Texas. Yeah, so they like start on like Tuesday, end on like the next. Have you ever been? No, I ain't never been. Oh, I'm going. We going. We going. Like, yeah, I, so I'm going to meet you there. <laughs> I, I'm getting my ticket. Yeah, we can. <laughs> well, at least working on Look, at least working on getting Right. We saving for it next week. Yeah. We saving for that motherfucker next week. Because I'm trying to get, you know, you got to get the team down there. Right, right. 
Yeah. Now, are you still, are you still, because before you started doing this, you were developing artists. Are you still yeah, doing yeah. that? Yeah, nah, I kind of, I'm kind of steering away from that. Nah, the, if the opportunity and possibility open up, it may be, but like, man, you know, developing artists is really hard. And What's the hard part about it? it? First of all, it costs a lot of money. Oh, okay. And artists have it's just so many different personalities that you have to deal with and you know me being an artist i don't know if if that's something you know i have an artist and a businessman so i can separate the two but i just i just don't see it happening right now Maybe, maybe you know, maybe sometime you know down the road because it takes time. I right, right. yeah, baby, because you you slick almost a manager, but, you know. But you have to deal yeah. with deal with it like a manager, even though you're dealing with it like you know like a, a CEO. Yeah, like, I can get somebody to manage that artist, but I, it's, it just takes a lot. Like you have to find somebody that's willing to do it. And you find somebody willing to do it, it's gonna cost money. Right. So, and then you know the production and trying, you know, as a producer. You know, and you, you gotta, gotta do marketing. Them. All yeah. the things you have to do for yourself, you have to do. You it's to like guide, doing it times two. Yeah, trying to guide them during a song. It's, it's it, it was a struggle. The two artists I had, not my singer. It was easy. You know, she's a singer. Everything was easy. But you know, things happen. You know, we grow up. And just kind of separated. I said, you know, it, it's always open, you know, whenever you're ready. But as far as like a rapper developing another rapper, it just takes so much time and energy and money. And I, am, I don't know if I'm ready for that no more. Again, <laughs> I can't do that again. Not right now. Not right. right now. You know. All right. But, um, tell them where to find you. Uh, you can find me on all social media, RGB2602. Once again, RGB2602. And on Facebook, you can just find me at RGB. That's my fan page, my artist page on Facebook. But yeah, that's where you find me. You can get different, the EP different, on all streaming platforms. Or you can, you know, download iTunes. And ROI is now on iTunes and all Spotify, Apple Music, and also Light Me featuring your shit. Boom, go get it. Oh. You can find me where you watching this at. How do you not know where to find me if you watching this? Right. <laughs> um, <but laughs> Right now, right here. Um, but you can find me on YouTube at Cool Breeze Media. You can find me on Twitter at King Breeze Sensitive Ass. And you can find me on Instagram at underscore K B R E E Z E underscore underscore or just underscore K Breeze underscore underscore. Um, oh, I got to showcase the temp. Yeah, I got to pull up. Yeah, the temp yeah. of the January? Temp. Yeah, yeah. I got to send you the flyer for it. As a matter of okay, fact, yeah, that's a Friday. We might, yeah, we might have to link get you to perform oh, yeah. or some shit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. 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 That's All what's right. up, because 2020, 20, not just 2020, yes, the whole 2020, the whole decade, the whole 2020, 2020 yeah. 2030 is mine. <laughs> Let's go, man. We out. We out, bro.